Let's talk about cholesterol in terms of cholesterol in general, but also the correlation between meat consumption and cholesterol. Well, I mean, cholesterol is a molecule that's essential for life. So first of all, if you actually ask the average doctor what cholesterol is, they will not be able to tell you. In medical school, I got through a whole medical degree and I did pretty well, I got honours. Mm. And I honestly could not have told you what cholesterol was at the end of it. I could tell you all, of, I could use a nomenclature, I could say HDL, LDL ratios, APOA1, APOB, etc. I could do, I could talk the talk, mm. but I honestly didn't have a good conceptual understanding of what it was. So let's talk about what is cholesterol. It's a small molecule, it is essential for life. Every cell has it. It's so important that if you don't eat it, the body will make it. If you do not have any cholesterol, you will die. So that's what cholesterol is. Now, what doctors call cholesterol are very complex particles. Think of them like a submarine that circles around inside your blood mm. and they carry cholesterol inside. Now, if you've ever um, poured some water inside a frying pan that's got a bit of fat in it, you'll see how the fat forms globules. Yeah. So fat that's what fat does and fat can't move around the circulation as a globule. It's got to be broken up into smaller particles. So this is why we need these particles and we call them lipoproteins, yeah. which will actually carry the cholesterol around the body. Now, the one that we talk about as being dangerous um, is called an LDL, a low density lipoprotein. Now, for some reason, and I, well, I'll tell you why, we associate high levels of LDL with heart disease. And this comes back to a guy called Ansel Keys, mm. and he developed what he called the lipid heart hypothesis. And he postulated that higher levels of saturated fat um, in the body could actually uh, then lead to deposition inside the arteries. And his model was developed from rabbits, an herbivore, an animal which has absolutely no capacity for uh, you know protein and uh, fats in their diet. So what did they feed these rabbits? <laughs> well, saturated fat, and they said them saturated fat, and somehow they thought that you could uh, translate an herbivore's experience and physiology to a human. human. So yeah, it's yeah. basically utter, utterly bad science. Yeah. But if you subscribe to this theory that saturated fat is then bad, we also have made the observation that saturated fat can increase the amount of circulating LDL. So if you accept the premise saturated fat is bad, then you must also accept the premise that LDL, high levels of LDL, is also bad. Mm. Now, unfortunately, the very first premise was wrong, so the second premise is also wrong. And the most recent meta-analysis um, that looked at 19 separate studies looking at all-cause mortality, so your chance of dying mm. and um, your LDL levels, they actually found in 16 of them that there was an inverse relationship. That is, the higher your LDL level, the longer you lived. Okay. So I mean, if, if that Bingo. doesn't I if, live a long time. if that doesn't immediately make you suspicious of our uh, of our fear of LDL, then I don't know what will. But we still do know that LDL does end up lining the blood vessels, and I'll tell you what happens there. It's when LDL gets damaged, and it can be damaged in two ways. It can be damaged through a process called glycation, where sugar attaches to it. Mm -hmm. And it can be damaged through a process called oxidation, which is to do with uh, uh, electrons in valence. It, it's basically, uh, think of it like rusting of a molecule. It's yeah. a, bit of a, 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 a bit of a loose description. But it can be oxidized or it can be glycated or damaged mm -hmm. by sugar. So what does that mean? So. If these things lead to LDL clogging your blood vessels, that means high blood sugar is bad and high oxidative stress is bad. What gives you high, high blood glucose? Well, carbohydrates are made of glucose. So therefore, eating high carbohydrate diets is what actually will turn your LDL bad. And oxidative stress, number of contributing factors in our modern lifestyles, but a big one is the omega-6 fats, vegetable and seed oils. So simply put, if you want to make sure that your LDL population remains healthy and is going to make sure that you're in uh, that population who lives longer with a high LDL, mm. 
don't have excessive amounts of vegetable and seed oils yeah. and don't have excessive amounts of carbohydrate. Yeah. That will keep you having a healthy cholesterol. Yeah, interesting. I think this for a lot of people is exciting, liberating, perhaps a little bit agitating. What tests should people be doing? Because again, this is one of my fundamental, that's the reason why I just don't go to the doctor anymore. I just went this year because my dad's a doctor and he said, you gotta get a check up, you're 50. And I said, dad, you're a stubborn old prick. I'll just go and get it. <laughs> but you go in and you get cholesterol done and we've just, we won't go back down that rabbit hole. Mm. Well, we can. Well, let, let's talk about if you're worried about your cholesterol yeah. Um, and if you want to know, do you have this damaged LDL? So we actually call that small dense because yeah. when it gets okay. glycated and oxidized, it actually gets a fraction smaller. Yeah. And um, we can do a fancy test to measure that. Um, that costs $120. It has to be sent to uh, one of the research laboratories. However, we can get a, a proxy of that looking at something called your HDL and your triglyceride ratio. Now, triglycerides are actually produced in the liver predominantly when you have excessive carbohydrate. Mm. So triglyceride is a very good marker of excess carbohydrate, and we know that it's excess carbohydrate that damages your LDL. And the data shows that if we have a look at the ratio between your triglyceride and your HDL, that will be a far better predictor of your chance of dropping off the perch than will looking at your LDL level. Mm. So triglyceride to HDL ratio would be something very good. There's another test called the HbA1c, and this is a test. So if you visualize that inside your blood vessels, you've got the pipe, you've got your blood cells, they're sort of like a, a UFO, or like a donut shaped yep. floating around, and you've also got molecules of sugar going around. So remember the term blood glucose level. Mm -hmm. So there is sugar in the blood. Now, these glucose molecules can passively attach to the blood, blood cells. Now, this, uh, this just happens based on the concentration of the sugar and how long it's been in contact. So if we understand that the average lifespan of a red blood cell is 120 odd days, then we can actually take a red blood cell, have a look at how much sugar is attached to it, and that can give us a rough guide for what your average blood sugar level is. So, and this average blood sugar is a very good indicator of your risk of heart disease, far better than almost any other blood test we can do. Mm. And why is it such a good indicator? Why does it have such strong predictive value? Because the problem causing a lot of this is high levels of carbohydrates. So HbA1c is certainly a good one. And there's a bunch of other inflammatory markers, but if I had to pick two, mm. if you're worried about heart disease, simple blood tests that are very easily available, Tri do it. triglyceride, HDL, and HbA1c. 